G'day guys, Jules20 here and welcome back to Marwa Mountain. In today's episode, I'm going to hopefully fix my industry situation. This has been something that has been bothering me for ages. None of it works. I mean, you can see cars driving around and trucks going from here and there, but you know, the production chain is just not what it should be. Um, because the whole reason why I started this map in the first place is to see this really nice interaction between all the industry within the region, um, not just the city, but you know, we've got like so much industry within Marble Mountain that we should be seeing a profit, which I mean, that's probably the closest we've seen. <laughs> Every now and again, it'll dip into the green, but then bam, straight back down to the minus. And obviously that's not like the prime focus for this series, but call me old fashioned, but I really like the interaction between all the buildings within the game. I think they do a really great job with the uh, production chain that was introduced to the Industries DLC. And fortunately, we just don't really see it in Marble Mountain. And um, a good example of that is so we've got like all this agriculture here, but yet none of my unique factories can even get enough resources. So I placed down this, um, yeah, this bakery a little while ago and we're always lacking in flour. So then I placed down a warehouse to get flour, but we've got zero freight in use. Okay, great. Do I need to have more production? So I've got this guy, but then he just gets stuck on two. See how it dips to three? And it just disappears. So the reason why is because I've used Move It to basically drag a lot of my buildings away from a road connection. I did explain this in a couple of videos ago, but um, and down here is a pretty good example. We've got this whole factory area, and I've dragged a lot of these buildings away from the road connection. And look, they still say they're. Well, this guy says it's not even operating. Yeah. Okay. Well, there, there you go. That's a good indication. None of these are operating, and it's because they have no connection to the road, even though they've got workers. So every time a truck is, uh, you know, tries to get to one of these buildings, it then tries to get there and then disappears, and it gets stuck like that, which then means that all my production is not functioning the way that it should. And look, making money is not the prime focus for this series, but I do really love that connection between industry and you know everything else because industry is like the backbone of everything that is part of the city and I really want to see it function the way that it should be you know I love knowing that there is a connection between Serrano Valley you know all the forestry and as it makes its journey you know across all the rail networks that I've you know put into the map then it makes its way into the city and gets turned into paper then that then goes to the industry so in, yeah that goes to the industry and it goes to the commercial and then, you know, it gets exported through the port. I like knowing that, but unfortunately we're not getting it. So that is where this bad boy comes into play. Procedural objects, something that I swore off for so long, but here it is on my screen. And the way that I'm going to use it is you can actually go through and change buildings into props. And that suits me down to a T because, you know, the whole reason why I built this wharf over here was to have the appearance of the wharf. Obviously there's better buildings you can get from the workshop, but you know, the whole purpose of this map as well is to another purpose for the map, I should say is to also try and use what we're given within the base game and see what we can do with them. And you know, <laughs> like I, I hate this. I hate that these are flashing and I hate that my industry isn't working. So I'm going to go through and change everything into props that, is no longer technically connected to the road. And I'm hoping that by doing that, we should be able to start seeing the production chain come back into play. There's another area that I want to work on, the downtown. So we've actually got a whole bunch of houses within the downtown, um, like apartment blocks that are spliced into these buildings, but they're all so miserable because um, these unique buildings are causing a lot of noise pollution, which I've always hated as part of the game. See all these ambulances in there? There's just so many sick people. So I'm actually going to go through and make these buildings into procedural objects. And then hopefully that way we can actually start seeing people live in the downtown. Whereas at the moment, it's pretty functionless. Although it is just making people sick. So <laughs> maybe that's its function. So we'll change that up too, and I'm hoping that'll fix that situation. I don't know guys, fingers crossed, my mouse just died for some reason, now it's not moving. <laughs> Alright, fingers crossed, I hope we can fix that industrial situation, and 
My mouse as well. Let's hope I can fix my mouse. Did it run out of batteries? What's going on here? All right, let's let's try this out. All right, super short time lapse as I go through and change all these buildings into procedural objects. I basically go through the entire map and find buildings that are not properly connected to the road and just change them into procedural objects, which is basically a prop. And then, yeah, then we have no more problems. And that is just such a super sweet way of um, solving the money situation in Marble Mountain. Um, it feels a little bit cheaty, but at the same time, I, you know, having these wolves not actually function properly makes no sense. And I would really like to, um, you know, there may as well be props, basically. You know, if, if they're not going to be functioning properly and actually working like a industrial building, then what's the point of having them there in the first place? Uh, I guess the only reason why you'd have them in locations like that to basically look like a wharf. And they still do look like a wharf. So, um, yeah, I guess going through and changing those buildings keeps the aesthetic alive but then just means that we can um you know move forward and continue to play the game and to see the city actually function which is um something that has been bothering me for a really long time in marble mountain and it's just really exciting to start seeing you know everything connect up the way that it should so um yeah i highly suggest you go and check this out and give it a crack this i have like no skills in procedural objects and you can actually see uh, those non-skills in action as I go and change all these buildings into PO and um, they're all changing color because I forgot to change the setting. Uh, ba basically when you change the PO they change back to their original color which um, I've gone and changed with uh, the color correction mod uh, or paint it mod I should say not color correction mod and um, yeah I changed the setting back so that they don't change color anymore. And I guess um, the problem that I was having is, and I still need to figure out how to fix this, but um, as I zoom out, the buildings disappear. So I need to figure out a way of changing that too. Um, I know there's a setting in there, but I haven't figured that out just yet. Um, but the really cool thing is that also in the downtown, the sims that live under those buildings that I, um, that I placed there, because I've got a whole bunch of apartment blocks that are just hidden within the other buildings uh, just to build a little bit of density. Uh, yeah, they're no longer complaining and having a, a good old time living in the downtown, which is more realistic than before. So yeah, um, that's something that I wanted to do. And, you know, it's just so exciting seeing the industry finally work in Marble Mountain because, like I said in the live play, I, you know, the, half the reason why I even started this map in the first place is I wanted to see that connection. And I haven't had that for a long time and it's bothered me for ages. Uh, which is kind of ridiculous because that ends up taking the majority of my brain power is trying to fix those problems. So it, um, it actually just feels really nice that it's all working and functioning well. Uh, now I'm going through and fixing up my zoo because this is something that hasn't worked for a while. And yeah, I tried a couple of different techniques because I really wanted to see the zoo functioning. And um, basically the same situation. It wasn't connected properly to the road. Um, so I decided and, and so that was because I had a different building um, over the top of the actual entrance and just like with the other buildings when you do that it then disconnects the other building so you got to be really careful of those um, yeah with those connections if you want to obviously make money and see things function the way that they should uh, but yeah I ended up just dragging a road over there just a dirt one and um, I'll end up changing the building that I ended up placing there, I think it's the amphibian building, I don't know, I can't remember, amphibian exhibit or something like that. Um, I ended up changing that to PO because that way it, um, yeah, it actually is just a prop and we don't have to worry about it uh, disconnecting from um, everything else, uh, which is really, really cool. I'm just so happy that that's a technique that's going to work. And um, look, I have been very wishy-washy with my use of PO and trying to avoid it as much as possible. The only reason why I've really been trying to avoid it, and I don't recommend this, but I have been avoiding that mod purely because I make videos and I want you guys to be able to follow along pretty easily. I want to be able to use techniques that aren't too tricky to follow along with and that means to try and use as little mods as possible, even though I am using a bunch of mods. I also want to be able to extend my audience to people who probably don't have as, you know, probably don't spend as many hours playing City Skylines as a lot of you guys do, um, including me. So, you know, in order to 
branch out my audience and to make it more relevant and accessible to anyone who is playing the game. Um, who knows what console looks like, I've never played it on console, actually I've played it for about five minutes on console and yeah it's pretty pretty tricky to get to the hang of it but basically that's my reasoning behind it but now that I've got it, geez it's easy to use <laughs> and it's so powerful. Um, I don't think I'm going to use it that much um, except for what I'm doing, changing those buildings into props because then it just gives me a lot more flexibility to place buildings where I want them to go and then also play the game as, you know, from a financial standpoint and watching everything connect and I just think that's pretty, um, pretty exciting. Um, but look, that is it for the time lapse. It was a short one. Let's get into another live play. I bet you never would have thought to see so much money being made in Marble Mountain, but check it out. Huge amounts of cash being made. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Um, and look, i got to admit, it fluctuates like crazy. I've seen it go up to 100,000. I've also seen it drop down into the red. So we are still definitely going up and down with the finances. And that's kind of exciting for me because that also means that we've still got room for improvement, which I'm totally fine with. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm the sort of player that as soon as I achieve the outcome, then yeah, I I kind of lose a bit of interest. So I'm kind of um, happy that we're still sort of jumping in and out of the red because it means that we've got room for improvement, which I'm totally cool with. Um, but the thing that I was really focusing on was seeing the connection between the industry and we are seeing it. Uh, that's apparent with the finance, but it's also apparent with my unique factories. I mean, this is bad timing because now it's complaining about this one, but you know, uh, we are seeing much better connection between my industry. So we'll, we'll come back to you, mate. All right. I, just trust me on that. But I think you can, something that is really um, noticeable is just my factories, are, my warehouses are actually producing vehicles. 12 out of 12 is ridiculous and zero and okay. Yeah. So we're going up and down. Okay, we'll, we'll see. There we go. Yeah, okay, so that, that one's working too. Um, so we are seeing much better production, which is excellent. Um, that was exactly what I wanted to see. I tell you what, it really shows how much the agriculture in Marble Mountain is just pumping out because we are making a lot of money from agriculture and in particular, we're seeing a lot of finance being made with, um, with my animal products. So I might need to place down some more unique factories that are, you know, specialized in that. Um, that's why I placed down this. I've changed a little bit of Copper Falls just to cater for what was um, the demand. So we're still sort of working on that. But um, yeah, I mean, the connection, the connection between the industry is just so cool. And you can really see it with the amount of traffic we are starting to see on the road. So we're seeing more freight being produced, which is so cool. Uh, that's really noticeable when you go down to the port. And you can just see how much, how much is just going on down here now. But so much is being exported. So that's really, really cool. And I just love knowing that my warehouses are actually producing, I mean, this is bad timing. But yeah, I couldn't turn this on before because we just had nothing coming in. But now the shipyard is, I mean, that's huge cash. I might even just crank that up a little bit because we are, we are seeing quite a lot coming in and out of here. Uh, something else that I worked on was Marble Mountain Zoo because that's always bothered me the fact that nobody was actually coming to the zoo. So yeah, now we actually have guests in the zoo, which is just so exciting. I mean, that's something that I've always wanted. And I hated the fact that nobody was actually coming into the zoo. Um, let alone now they're actually walking around. The zoo just makes some ridiculous sounds. But check it out. There's people actually walking around the zoo. <laughs> I mean, would you believe it? Uh, and I have to admit, this was pumping a little bit more before. It sort of died down a little bit. There was people over here before. Where did they go? All right, Look, just, just take my word for it, all right? But yeah, the zoo is finally seeing people. Uh, we are seeing people coming in and out through the buses, which is really nice because they weren't really doing anything for, before. And now I've actually placed down a uh, helicopter pad too here. I actually changed the location. It used to sit here, but now I put it over here because I felt like it needed it. And yeah, that's kind of cool seeing helicopters land here. And uh, because I'm kind of crazy, I've just, I've renamed all 
all these uh, people generators to Marble Mountain Zoo. Because you know what? I like clicking on people and knowing that they're going to my zoo, alright? That's the way I play. So, um, yeah. The one thing I do need to fix up is the render distance. Is just something going on with that. See that? I don't know. Tell me how you fix that. How do I fix that? But that's kind of annoying. So yeah, I mean, I am a little bit disappointed that, of course, these are now just props that you just look at rather than something that is functioning, but they weren't functioning in the first place, which was something that was definitely causing a lot of the issues. So unfortunately, these are now just props, but I'm, I am fine with that because... For, for like for starters they weren't working anyway but also they kind of just hold the backdrop for the rest of the other industry that is actually um, that actually has a purpose and the fact that they weren't working in the first place really just doesn't matter um, and we do need to fix up that render distance because all the main buildings from Marble Mountain so from Montana have disappeared um, until I get a little bit closer so if anyone knows how to fix that render distance then let me know and I also need to fix up the colors too but you know Things are changing. And it's just nice that we're not producing just a ridiculous amount of pollution, noise pollution in here. And this is an actual livable downtown. Whereas before, it wasn't. People couldn't live in here. It was uh, too noisy. So now we've actually got like a thriving population in here, which is also really exciting. But guys, I mean, I am pretty excited for the next chapter of Marble Mountain. I mean, everything is just starting to take shape and we are moving on to the next side of the bay which is also exciting and everything is connected and working I um, mean that is just so damn exciting so um yeah do let me know what you're what you're thinking I hope as well this might be a helpful video if you are also trying to fix some problems I know I was in a little bit of a unique situation but let me know if this has been helpful in any way or just entertaining I mean either one let me know in the comment section or just by rating up the video but guys that is it I want to give a special shout out to some of my patrons like Robert Murick, Damien, Joel Picaro, Nicholas French and Dexter Bats. Thank you guys very much for supporting the channel and thank you all for watching. Very much appreciated and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!